Oh, baby, week seven, fabulous football Friday. It's here. We've been hyping it up all week, and it delivered. Fabulous football Friday is presented by Lewis Nissan and Beckley ARH Orthopedics. What a Friday it was. Week seven already here. So much to get into. Independence, can they bounce back after two losses in a row? How about the Clash of Titans? Two clashes of Titans, undefeated James Monroe going to undefeated Greenbrier East, and then the one out in Princeton. Hurkin going to Princeton, a battle of top 10 teams. We have all the highlights, all the breakdowns, all the scores, but we have to start with the team that was on a bye last week. Oak Hill, 4-1 on the season, tremendous season led by head coach Devon Marion. They go out to Greenbrier East, who hasn't won a game yet. But coming off a bye, they could be looking ahead. Could it be a bit of a trap spot? Let's go out to Greenbrier East to find out. We go out to Greenbrier East where the 4-1 Red, Red Devils are in town. And right off the bat, Brody Hamrick throws it to Bryce Arthur on the screen. And Arthur takes it in for a big gain. Spartans inside the five. Hamrick takes it himself. Puts on a move and gets tackled at the three. They are trying to get this in early. Now, they try again. This time, a handoff. But the Red Devils defense won't budge. It's fourth and one, and the Spartans are going for it. Hammer tries himself, and he stopped. He stopped at the one, and the Red Devils take over. So Oak Hill backed up at their own one. But Malachi Lewis says, I don't care, as he takes the snap and throws it up to Armandi Hicks, who makes the diving catch. What a play by Hicks. Red Devils have some room to work now as Lewis throws up another pass. And this time it's Elijah Gray who comes down with it. Now Lewis feeling the pressure, steps up in the pocket, finds Elijah Gray at the two-yard line. And when the, you're at the goal line, what do you do? You follow your big men as Malachi Lewis does that in the Red Devils strike first, 7-0. Oak Hill. Back on offense, Lewis this time sends Moritz in motion, takes the snap, pump fakes to Moritz, looks up, and guess who? It's Elijah Gray again, right into the breadbasket, and Gray turns it up the volume to 10 and goes for 7. The long pass is working for the Red Devils as they go up 13-0. Now the Spartans have a drive. Going as they're inside the Red Devils territory, but Brody Hamrick overthrows a pass, and Zacchaeus Lewis is there to pick it off and give the Red Devils the ball back. So Oak Hill takes over. Lewis sends a man in motion, takes the snap, and Elijah Gray is having a field day out there because it's him again as he takes the catch, runs it all the way down to the Spartans' five-yard line. Take a bow, Mr. Gray. And then J.D. Moritz finishes off the drive as the Oak Hill Red Devils go on to win 40 to 6. Coming off that bye, didn't bother Oak Hill. They got time to prepare, relax, and they came out rolling. They are now 5 and 1 on the season. This game this game, the game we've been talking about all week, our game of the week, sponsored by C. Adam Tony Tire Pro, James Monroe 4 0, Greenbrier West 4 0. A team, a game that could truly impact the playoff standings. Who's going to be one seed? Who's going to be two seed? It's the two best teams in the Class A division, and they faced off tonight. Let's go out to Greenbrier West. We head out to Greenbrier West for this one our game of the week, and it looked to be a barn burner. Greenbrier West faced off against James Monroe, both undefeated teams with championship hopes, but only one could come out on top. The first half was a defensive battle for the first 20 minutes or so. There you see Cooper Ridgeway with a great tackle on the edge to limit the quarterback keeper. One thing that was working for James Monroe early was the passing game. There you see Leighton Dowdy hit Chaz Boggs on the out route for a big gain. And Boggs was fired up for that one. That connection was working for James Monroe as Dowdy fires a pass to Boggs on the crossing route for a big gain. And what a catch by Boggs. The Greenbrier West defense, though, came up big as Jake Pate comes flying off the right side for a sack to kill the James Monroe drive. And that is what we saw all, all year from that Greenbrier West defense. But there was a huge special teams miscue for Greenbrier West on the next drive. The snap goes over the punter Isaac Aggie's head. He makes a great effort to recover the ball and prevent the touchdown, but he wasn't able to get out of the end zone, resulting in a James Monroe safety. 
and then things started to get real interesting. James Monroe started getting the run game going, using it to drive down the field, and then late in Dowdy rolls out of the pocket and hits you-know-who Chaz Boggs with a perfect throw to the back of the end zone for six points with less than a minute to go in the half. The problem? James Monroe missed the extra point, keeping it a one possession game. And Greenbrier West was not about to be outdone at home. First, Jake Pate takes the long kick deep into James Monroe territory all the way, but a block in the back penalty moves the ball back to the 50 yard line with only 30 seconds left in the half. But quarterback Cole Vandal connecting on a deep fade pass to Ethan Holiday for the huge gainer. Then 14 seconds left. Greenbrier West runs the same play, and again, Vandal hits Holiday on a deep pass up the sideline, dropping the ball in perfectly between two defenders right at the five-yard line for an easy touchdown. And missing that extra point proved to be costly as Cole Vandal takes the design run to the right end for the two-point conversion, tying the game up 8-8 eight to eight going into half. We pick things up in the second half, and this is when it got juicy for the Cavaliers as they're driving and Vandal hits Jake Pate on a screen, and he weaves and bops his way for a big gain. Now, Vandal drops back, but decides to take off with the QB draw right up the middle, and the Cavaliers are in business. So Vandal, with some confidence in shotgun, pumps fakes, looks for down the field in double coverage, but he finds his guy Colton Dunbar for the touchdown. The Cavaliers take the first lead of the game. Greenbrier West gets the ball back. Vandal pitches it to Pate. Pate turns up the field, dodges a defender, takes a hit and bounces off and keeps on trucking for a big gain inside the 10 yard line. Now Vandal under center, fakes the handoff, throws it up to Tucker Lilly, who corrals it home. Cavaliers come back and go on to win 25 to eight. This was a game that had it all. As you see the final score here, game of the week sponsored by C. Adam Tony Tire Pros. Greenbrier West stays undefeated. They get down early, but they use that stifling defense to come back and then the offense clicks. Let's do full screen breakdown for this one. All right, stop it right here. This is what I want to show you. Right here, the quarterback, Cole Vandal, he does an incredible job with how he's going to fake out the defense. You're going to look at Jake Pate. Jake Pate's the guy to watch as you play it here. All right, stop it. Look at that. It looks like he threw the ball, right? It looks like he threw the ball to Jake Pate. He didn't. He pumped fake the ball, which leaves guys like this and guys like this. They're now running at Jake Pate because they think he had the ball. He didn't throw it. He pump faked it and watch what he does from here. And he throws it up. Stop it. Double coverage. There's two guys. There's two guys in between the one, but Vandal throws up the best possible pass. You cannot throw it in a better place than Vandal just did, and it goes right to him, and that's their big touchdown to give them the lead, and it was all downhill from there. Stop it again. Vandal did this pump fake all night long. You're going to see it again here. He does a quick little boom, and then here comes the throw. Boom, boom, look at this. He gets, Elijah, Hall, Ethan Holiday gets a bit of a head start. Still, double coverage, throwing into double coverage is so hard, and look how he puts it. Right into Holiday's hands. Holiday tight ropes the out of bounds, and he's good. Now, this is Jake Pate being Jake Pate. I want to talk about these guys. This whole offensive line here, this is the special part of this play. They do their job that gives Jake Pate basically untouched until the beginning. Ready? Here he goes. Now, stop it right here, okay? You're going to see Jake Pate. He's right there. He's so quick you can barely see him. Watch what he does. He dodges a one defender and then stop it. It looks like he's down right now. It, this is the strength of Jake Pate. Play it. He's not and he gets four more extra yards. Those extra yards count in a game like that, and that is so impressive. Greenbrier West did this as a team, and they did it as a team for many weeks coming into this, and they stuck to their morals, they stuck to their coaching, and they went on to beat a very good, a very good James Monroe team, and Cole Vandal, my goodness, some of those throws, some of those pump fakes, that is magic 
as a quarterback, and that's how you go on to beat a good team like James Monroe. We are just getting started here on Fabulous Football Friday. Still so much to come. Independence, did they bounce back? And then the big battle out in Princeton. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back. Fabulous Football Friday. Week 7 is here and we are underway. Fabulous Football Friday presented by Lewis Nissan and Beckley ARH Orthopedics. And what a week it was. You just saw what we were just talking about earlier. Greenbrier West, massive win. Don't take anything away from James Monroe, though. They might be right back playing against that team in the playoffs because that would they are a very good team. But it just shows the physicality and the team of Greenbrier West. And then what else can you say about Oak Hill coming off a bye, not looking out, not looking ahead in their schedule and taking it to Greenbrier East. Another team, though, on the opposite side of teams like Oak Hill and Greenbrier West is Independence, a team that won the uh, AA state championship last year, came back, looked really hot beginning of the year, and now they've lost three games. We're wondering if losing guys like Judah Price, and they lost a lot of guys, is hurting them. Or... They just need to get their feet going. Let's go out to Independence as they took on a hot West Side team. Independence ready to roll here. Tyler Linksweiler takes the toss from quarterback Silas Nelson, and Linksweiler follows his blockers, turns on the Jets, and is gone. 45 yard touchdown run for Linksweiler to start the game. West Side. Turns on the off, turns to offense. Caden Vance buying time, pressure in his face, throws it up, and it's well defended by the brothers known as Christian and Tyler Linksweiler. Trey Bowers now comes into motion, takes the handoff, shows patience, and then turns on and gets deep into West Side territory. And now they give it to Connor Bradford. And it's the duo of Bradford and Linksweiler. This time it's Bradford who weaves and bops his way, zigzags all the way through the defense and finds the end zone for a 35-yard touchdown run. Patriots up 14-0. Westside can't get anything going on offense. They punt it away to Trey Bowers, and Bowers says, time to go to work. And look at him go coast to coast, dodging blocks left and right, patience, speed, all of it. Looks around and says, yep. I think that'll do it for the play as he takes a knee right inside the 25-yard line. Patriots on offense. Here comes the motion again. This time it's Taylor Dove. Dove takes the handoff, hits the outside, and he is going untouched all the way into the end zone. Three possessions for the Patriots equals three touchdowns, and the Patriots go on to win 55-0. That is a big-time game there by Independence. Losing two in a row, three losses on the season. How are they going to bounce back? Well, let's go break down to see how they did it. All right, we start things off here. Quarterback, Silas Nelson. This is the big thing I want to talk about, though. Trey Bowers. They did this all night long, and it's all about throwing the defense off. He's already running into motion, so it gives the whole defense, what are they going to do? Do they, do they follow guy like Trey Bowers, or do they keep their eyes on a quarterback? That's the whole point about motion. Now watch it. They give it to Bowers, and here goes Bowers. Stop it right there. Now that Bowers has the ball, the defense knows it, but they're a little bit behind because they had to play the guessing game. And then Bowers, look at that, covered by defender. 72 right there, he doesn't care, play it. And he, I'm just going to give him the screen because he goes patience to full speed to patience. That is what he does so well, and it's all about that motion. And that's why I want to show this again. You're not even going to see the guy that they have in the picture here, okay? Independence has a guy that's going to come completely into motion out of nowhere. Better show it from you from this way. Up here at the top, okay? He's not even in the play right now. Then, here he comes. As we play it, here comes the motion, and then play it some more, and just let him go from there. That's Dove just doing his thing left and right. That motion offense is what Coach Lilly wanted, and Coach Lilly got it. Now, the game of all games. This was a shootout like no other. Two teams that have real chance of winning it all. Herkin going all the way to Princeton for a battle of top five teams. Let's go out to Princeton for this one. 
Princeton with the ball. Chance Barker rolls out to the right and hits Brad Moser on the crossing route to the sideline. The passing game was working well as Barker throws a quick pass to Kisner in the flat, and he does the best, weaving his way for the 15-yard gain. Then Lowe runs a wheel route to the backfield, and that is how. It was back and forth game all night long for these two, and Princeton got out to a huge 14-6 lead. Then they go, and it's a big game by Lau. Look at Lau go, just crossing things over left and right, takes it all the way down for a touchdown. Just like that, you think, oh my goodness, is Princeton going to run away with this one? 21 to 7? Could that possibly be? But Hurkin, they come right back with that inside run game, blocking all the way up with the big boys. It's 24 to 14, and that is when things start to come. But Chance Barker says not so fast as he steps up in his throw. And guess who? It's Dominic Collins. Who else would it be? Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. All the way down for a touchdown. We are rolling in Princeton in a high-scoring game. 28-14. to 14. And then Princeton again. This time, Chance Barker. Boom, another play to Dominic Collins, and he's gone now. That's a full-blown out, but from there, Hurkin goes on and just takes it to him. They come out of the half, and they do what they were not ready, what Princeton was not ready to do, as they just run it up the middle, and then it opens up the pass game all night long from Hurkin. Hurkin comes all the way back from a 28-14 to game to go on to win in Princeton, 56 to 42. Huntington, 49 to zero over Will Woodrow Wilson. Tough one for Woodrow Wilson. They're still a really good team, but Huntington is the number one team in the whole state. Greenbrier West, 25 to eight. That was our game of the week. Oak Hill, 40 to six. Hurricane, 56 to 42. Man, 22 over Shady Spring, 20. Bit of a slipping for Shady there. Summers County with a big bounce back, 52 to six. Bluefield, 43 to zero over Pikeview. Independence, 55 to zero over Westside. Clay County, 60 to Lincoln County, 38. Midland Trail, 41 to Liberty, 14. And then Winfield 65 to 0, Nitro 55 to 12 over Buffalo, and Cameron 64 to 14. Fabulous football Friday week seven. We had it all from blowouts to good games, but don't let some of these scores mislead you. Woodrow Wilson's still a very good team. Independence, maybe they're going to come right back up after a big win against a West Side team that had won two in a row. And that was a must win for Independence to keep their playoff hopes alive, and they did it. But the moral in the story, Greenbrier West is undefeated still with a big win over a great James Monroe team. That does it for Fabulous Football Friday Week 7. But don't go anywhere. Our final forecast is next.